Hello and welcome to another video of Future Finds. So as you know, uh, Boston Fan Expo was not this weekend, but the weekend prior to, which was uh, August 10th, 11th, and 12th. And I was fortunate enough to go. And also, not only that, but I was fortunate enough to go a little bit early. So I was able to visit some of the sites in Boston, some of the historic sites, which I will get to in just a moment. But let me just say this, if you're gonna go to a major convention, a uh, major Comic-Con or any kind of an event and you're having to travel out of town, maybe even having to fly there and even coming from another country, uh, try to come a little bit earlier than the convention, like maybe a day or two earlier than the convention. That way you can get settled in, get your rental car if you're getting a rental car, getting your uh, room. And not only that, but visiting the historical sites. Uh, for instance, Boston. I was able to fortunately get there a day early, actually a half a day early. So I was able to visit some of the some of the historic sites in Boston. Uh, I had a list of some sites I wanted to see. I think about five or six. I was only able to visit about three in half a day's time, which uh, I had a rental car, but I had to do a lot of walking too. And uh, so I was able to visit the USS Constitution. That was my first choice. And I was able to do that the very first thing that I did. The second thing that I did was the uh, Paul Revere House. So I visited that. And then the third thing I did was visit the Gran Granary, hope I'm saying it right, the Granary Burial Ground. And in that was is buried uh, such patriots and signers of the Declaration of Independence like um, John Hancock, Samuel Adams, Robert Treat Payne, and also, uh, forgetting one, let's see, let's see, Samuel Adams, I'm trying to think, Samuel Adams, Robert Treat Payne, John Hancock, and Paul Revere. That's the three people that I saw. There's a few other people that are buried in there, but like I said, I just didn't have the time to look at everyone in the burial ground that I wanted to see, but at least I saw four of um, my top people that I wanted to see. So let's get right into some of the things that I did. Uh, the first thing I did, like I said, was visit the USS Constitution. So I was able to pick up uh, this photo of the USS Constitution. Let's see if I can straighten it out there. This was about $29. It's a nice, nice photo. And I was able to get a top loader from the comic book convention, put it in the top loader so that I could carry it home. I, was able, I had to trim off the sides, not of the photo, but of the, um, the mat. So that's no problem. I can always get a mat, but the photo I wanted to protect. So I got a top loader for about $7 at the Comic-Con and put it in here so that I can put it in my luggage and bring it home. So like I said, this is about $29. They had a lot of things. At the USS Constitution, not only could you go aboard the ship, but they also had a, a museum and a uh, store, gift shop. And I was able to go into the gift shop. I was able to go into the museum, not spend a whole lot of time in the museum. I did walk around, paid. Uh, there's really not a set. A price that you need to pay to get into the museum is strictly donation only so I paid $15 to get in anywhere between five to fifteen dollars is a normal uh, donation price so this I got in the store but uh, the museum I was able to walk through in the museum didn't read everything like I wanted to because I was on time constraints I only had half a day this was on Friday so I saw this Friday morning uh, this was in the gift shop and I bought this they did I was a little bit disappointed at their gift shop. Uh, their gift shop was really fantastic. Fantastic. The only problem I had with their gift shop was they didn't have any DVDs, any kind of documentaries on this historic ship, which I was really disappointed. They had some television programs, like uh, fictional series. I don't know what it was, but it was uh, some uh, television shows that are on now. I can't even remember. It was only like four DVDs, but no documentaries, no kind of uh, National Geographic documentary, nothing about the USS Constitution. So I was, that's, that's one thing I was really disappointed with. 
So this is a nice picture. I'm going to get it framed and put it on my wall. So that is that. Another thing I picked up from the gift shop is this pen. I'll show you this pen. This is a pen that uh, has wood in it from the USS Constitution. So this pen, there was about four or five different pens of different uh, costs that you can buy from about $60 on up to about $130. And this was the cheap one that I bought for about $60. This has wood from the USS Constitution. I'm gonna do a close up there so you can see it. And it says USS Constitution right on there. And I'm not even sure what, I haven't even written, wrote, writ, wrote with this pen yet. It looks like it's, I think it's blue ink, or I'm sorry, black ink. So it looks like it's black ink. And there came with this little card inside there. And I'll just, I'm not going to read everything, but I just will say, it says, this pen is made from wood taken from the USS Constitution, the oldest commissioned warship afloat in the world. The wood was, was removed in 1973 as part of a refitting done by the U.S. Navy. And then after that, it uh, gives a little bit of history of uh, the USS Constitution. And it's got a nice little picture of the USS Constitution on that. And that's the back of it right there. So this card came with the pen. And you have a nice little uh, case to put your pen in. Made in America, uh, Maine, Maine made, so I'm assuming it was made in Maine. If you want to know where you can get these, there's a website on here. It says www.mainmade.com. That's M A I N E M A D E.com. Mainmade.com. So that's that. And I'm sure you can probably get other pens that are different price ranges on that website. I haven't looked at it yet. And I'm going to show, put some, display some little pictures here on this video. Uh, they, that was the USS Constitution. I was able to go aboard um, for free, actually. It is free. It's open, um, I think, all days except for major holidays like Christmas, Thanksgiving, New Year's, and those kind of holidays, Columbus Day, whatever. Um, I did go aboard the ship. Uh, there's three levels that you can go to. And then there's one level that is restricted, but you can ask. There is people that work in the Charleston Navy Yard that will answer your questions that are aboard the ship. It's a very nice ship. It's very historic. If you're ever in Boston, and if I could say do one thing, it would be to visit the USS Constitution. So I did go aboard, went down three decks, visited everything. It was very, very nice. And it's not a guided tour. You can guide yourself. As soon as you get on the ship, you can do and go wherever you please, whatever you want, within bounds of you know the regulations that they have there at the Navy Yard. You can go wherever you want on the ship and spend as much time as you want. It's not that you have to be on there for 10 minutes and then get back off. You're not a guided tour. You can guide yourself. Um, so after that, I went to the Paul Revere House. The Paul Revere House uh, had to do a little, little bit of walking drove and I found a parking lot, a paid parking lot, so I paid for parking there, parked my car and walked and was able to, by asking uh, the, na the, the local townsfolk uh, where Paul Revere House was because I didn't have um, the proper GPS and directions that I had. Anyway, so I finally found Paul Revere House and I think it was five dollars to get in there don't quote me on that, but it's cash only. If you want to know, it's cash only, so make sure you bring cash. They do give change. You don't have to have exact change to get in. They will give you change, but you do have to pay cash to get in. I think it's $5 or $8. I am can't remember. Uh, so the Paul Revere House, once you get inside, you're not allowed to take any pictures because a lot of the things that are in the Paul Revere House are privately owned, and they're on loan to the Paul Revere House but I did sneak one little picture as soon as I got inside. Um, one very, very nice thing that I enjoyed while visiting the Paul Revere House, uh, and that's just like the USS Constitution. You can spend as much time as you want in there. I mean, there's uh, only so much you can do with that. There is an above floor, uh, ground floor, and then a top floor 
there is people in there that run the place and give uh, little talks and demonstrations, not really demonstrations, but just explaining the history of Paul Revere House. One thing that I liked was um, a lot of the house is original. This house was built in 1680 and there was uh, an original beam in the house that they had part of the, the little wall open where you can see the original beam. You can't touch it because it's behind a uh, uh, rope. It's roped off, uh, but you could see it. So that was really, really nice to see that beam from 1680 still there in the house. After that, I went to the gravesite of Paul Revere, Samuel Adams, Robert Treat Payne, and John Hancock. That was a long walk. That was a long walk. Um, there is what's called the Freedom Trail, and the Paul Revere House, USS Constitution, and the, the Granary Burial Ground are on the Freedom Trail but the Granary Burial Ground was a long walk. Uh, a lot of asking directions. <laughs> Where is this? Where is this? Surprisingly, some people, some locals didn't even know. Ouch. But uh, visited the gravesite of Paul Revere, Samuel Adams, Robert Tree Payne, John Hancock. That was very, very nice. You are allowed to take pictures in there. Uh, it is free to get in, uh, which was nice. There was a guy there at the entrance that was handing out a um, uh, three-ring binder booklet pamphlets that showed uh, the history of the gravesite and showed where the markers were so you could see where they are. If you are on a time constraint, you can visit as long as you want. You can be in there as long as you want, go wherever you want. After that, then I went to the Boston Convention Center and I went to the panel. So now we're going to get into the Boston Convention Center and I will show some things that are, oh, one more thing I wanted to show. Um, while I was on the USS Constitution, one thing that I did get besides the pen in the picture was this coin. This was actually on the ship. They had this little table, excuse me, set up where you could buy some little souvenirs. I think, I can't remember what one of them was. There was only two souvenirs. I picked up one, which I'm about to show you. The other one I think might've been a t-shirt or something simple like a, a t-shirt, a coffee mug, or I can't remember what it was. It didn't really interest me. But what really interested me was this medallion. This uh, comes from Government Sales Company, and the website is, it's giving me two websites, uh, militarycoins.us and militarycoinsonline.com. And there is a number, it's 573-220-5413. Here's the coin, or medallion. It's not really a coin, it's a medallion. So I'll see if I can get it up close to you right there. On this side, it says USS Constitution, Old Ironsides. Very, very nice coin. And here's the opposite side. And on this side, it says undefeated, 1797. The ship was made in 1797, and it is still float. Uh, from what I gather, only 10 to 15 percent of the original ship still exists. It's been restored, replaced, but it looks exactly like it does when it was first built in 1797. So that is that. All right, getting to the Boston Convention Center. Uh, I'll get to the Back to the Future stuff in just a moment. Let me show you what I picked up. Uh, these were exclusives to Boston Fan Expo. Uh, they had Action Comics, uh, the beginning of Action Comics with Superman, and then they had sensation, Sensational Comics with Wonder Woman. I wanted to get Wonder Woman, but uh, Comic-Cons can really drain you of your money really fast, so I picked my favorite superhero of all time, which was Superman. This is Action Comics number one. This was $45. You got both the Virgin, I'm sorry, the Virgin variant and... Action Comics number one. These are reprints, exact reprints of how Action Comics was in 1938. So I got both of these and I will probably be turning these into CGC. So that's that. $45 for the pair. Oh, they had both of these in a bag and board. Here was the board and here's a rant to Comic Cons. Get better boards. Okay, piece of cardboard, flimsy piece of cardboard. Ain't gonna do it. Get a real but get a real board. If you're gonna do it right, do it right. Okay. I know you're trying to take the cheap way out, save money. I know you're trying to make money, but 
treat your fans right. They paid to get there, they paid to go to your Comic Con. Get a real board in there, not a piece of cheap cardboard. If you're going to pay $45, give me a good board. The kind that should be in there. Alright, so that's that. I got this from Natalie Sanders. If you don't know Natalie Sanders, you can uh, Facebook, go on Facebook, or uh, Dark Silver Studios is her website. Dark Silver Studios, her website. She is a very, very talented artist, very, very good artist. I love her artwork. And this was Batman number 50, The Wedding Issue. Very, very nice artwork right there. I could not resist buying this, and she autographed it right here. Very, very nice woman. Very nice lady. She does very good artwork. She's one of the best, in my opinion. Can't say enough about her. All right. Uh, pops. The, the Funko Pops. They had a lot of Funko Pops. Um, I tried to look for Marty McFly on the hoverboard. Nobody had that. But I was able to get uh, two of my favorites from Mystery Science Theater 3000, Crow and Tom Servo. Sometimes these are hard to find in one spot. You can probably find this, or you could probably find this, but you, it's hard to find both of them. I was able to find both of them. Got pop protectors, and that's how I brought them home. So I was able to find these for a good deal. Loved this, and I could not say no for $15. Justice League versus Marvel. And it looks like Marvel is getting their ass handed to them on a silver platter. Could not resist that. I'm a big fan of DC. Don't really care for Marvel. Love the movies, but I like DC better. Superman being my number one superhero. So that is that. All right. Uh, Last but not least of the non-Back to the Future, this is Drew Struzan artwork, and it is a beauty. Action Comics number one, just like the uh, comic book cover. Action Comics number one, 1938, first appearance of Superman. This is art done by the legendary Drew Struzan. And I have a video, if you can check out my one of my previous videos on Drew Struzan, he is the legendary artist for Hollywood. He has done over 150 classic and historic iconic movie posters for Hollywood movies. Uh, you name it, Star Wars, Harry Potter, uh, Lord of the Rings, Indiana Jones, Back to the Future, Adventures in Babysitting, E.T., Rambo. I loved this and he autographed it. And this is his likeness right there. This is numbered. He only did a hundred prints. I was unfortunate enough to get number two. I was unfortunate enough to get number two. Can you believe that? Two out of a hundred right here. I'm still proud of it. This is going on my wall. Now for, excuse me, now for Back to the Future stuff. Sorry about that. Uh, where should I begin? Let's begin with Drew Struzan. Again, the artist that I just showed you from Superman, he did this. And these are also numbered. 750 pieces. I think this is... 36 long by 20 something, I don't know the exact measurements, but this is a limited edition out of 750. And he signed it right here. This one is number 209 out of 750. So this is a really good piece. This one this particular piece cost me 150 The Superman cost me 100 Okay, next would be a pack of cards. I got this from Stephen Clark that it, uh, runs a backtothefuture.com store. This is Biff Tannen's Pleasure Paradise Playing Cards. I think I picked these up. Gosh, I can't even remember how much I got these for. But there you go, Biff's Pleasure Palace. Pleasure Paradise playing cards. Now, so this is one thing that I got uh, that was ex exclusive to Boston. 
this tote bag, this was $5. Could not go wrong. Anything that has Back to the Future on it, especially if it's an exclusive with a Comic-Con, I will get it all day long, especially for a $5 price. So that is that. Uh, I saw this at uh, Terry and Oliver Holler's area where they take pictures for the car. This is a call sheet and I picked this up for $5. Cannot go wrong for $5 call sheet. And they put a nice little coupon inside there for 20% off on my next purchase up until December of this year, I believe. So a call sheet for $5. And I will frame this. This is again a top loader right here. We'll talk more about this top loader in just a minute. Uh, there was a lot of vendors in the Comic Con that were selling Back to the Future stuff, especially Pops um, and the license plates. So I saw this and I could not resist getting this for $5. This is a hover, hoverboard operator's permit. Hoverboards hoverboard operator's permit and I was wearing this all day long with my costume and I was in costume. Had a nice little clip here where you could clip it to your clothing or costume. This was $5. Uh, saw this license plate for Doc Brown's truck. This was uh, sealed in plastic and it had this on the back, the bumper sticker. One nuclear bomb can ruin your whole day. So I got this. Admittedly, I really wasn't sure what this was. I knew it was Back to the Future, because it said Back to the Future on it, but I had to ask. Uh, dumb me, huh? And he told me, uh, he, had, he had to think about it for himself too, and then he said, oh, it's the truck that was in the movie. So I said, okay, thinking it was uh, maybe Marty's truck, but it wasn't, it was Doc's truck. Okay, what else? Um, now we are on to the autographs. This I got from Christopher Lloyd at his table. Nice little picture there. Got his autograph on there. That's when he was on the Jules Verne time train. Picked this autograph up for... A, I can't remember if it was 80 or 100. It was one of those two, but that was his normal charge that, that he does. That's the only autograph that I got from Christopher Lloyd. I didn't get any from Tom Wilson. Um, I got one from Lee Thompson. Uh, I'm not going to show that. It's too personal. This. Uh, now let's go to the autographs from Michael J. Fox. I got four autographs from Michael J. Fox. I got an Ultimate Experience package, which was $500, and that includes uh, front row seat, first priority seating to the panel that was on Friday night at 7 p.m. The Ultimate Experience also includes uh, an in-person autograph on anything you want and a solo photo with Michael J. Fox and I will show that in just a minute. But this is the flux capacitor door and I had Michael autograph it right up here as you can see. This right here, is, you can see this blue tape is because there's a plastic covering still on here, I have not taken it off, but I put the plastic covering from a top loader. You can cut up a top loader and make it as a covering to protect your autographs, which I highly recommend if you're going to do some traveling and packing stuff in your suitcase. Uh, clothing and things will rub on to, rub off actually your autographs. Even though it is permanent marker, it can still damage the autograph. So you want to protect those by having them in a top loader. See that? You can tape it to whatever you want to protect your autographs on the way home. So that's Michael J. Fox's autograph right there that I got. All the other graphs I've already had. I just need to get this one certified. Now, I would recommend if you're going to take the flux capacitor anywhere to get autographed and you have to fly, take the door off instead of lugging around a big flux capacitor. Trust me, I've done that one time and this popped out and it's extremely difficult to get back in. And it's basically a pain in the butt to carry a big flux capacitor when you can carry a thin door and a backpack. Huh, go figure. So all you do 
is these things right here. See those? There's a pin. All you gotta do is take uh, a little tiny, like a um, screwdriver set for eyeglasses and just get a little hammer and you can pop the pin right out. Pull the door off and you can take the door with you. Leave the flux capacitor at home. Just take the door. Trust me. You will thank me for it. So that's the first autograph I got from Michael J. Fox. Uh, the second autograph that I got from Michael J. Fox was on the 2015 movie poster. This is not a poster from the first movie, second movie, or third movie from 1985, 1989, and 1990 that we know. This is a poster from 2015, and I'll show it later in a, in a future video. I just don't want to unwrap it right now because I still want to get it framed. But the only signature I still needed on this poster was Michael J. Fox, and I was able to get it. So this is a 2015 Back to the Future Part 2 one day only movie poster. Uh, the third thing that I got, and I think I might have talked about this on a prior video, is this picture right here. And I was able to finally get Michael J. Fox's autograph right there. Very, very worth it. Michael J. Fox, Bob Gale, and Christopher Lloyd. So I was very pleased with that. And I'm going to get this one certified too. Last but not least, I got a solo photo op with Michael J. Fox and my guitar. I had a hell of a time trying to get the photo with my guitar and Michael J. Fox. I was, giving, I, I was given an extremely difficult time uh, by the handlers that were with Michael J. Fox. I don't know what the struggle was. Um, it's my prop and I'm going to hold it. It's not like I'm going to ask Michael to hold it. Anyway, make a long story short, I was given a very difficult time. Finally, I was able to get in there with my guitar and get my picture taken with Michael. Now, what Michael does, Michael does. Uh, he shouldn't be stopped. Um, if Michael wants to do something, let him do it. I'm not going to stop him. I'm not going to question him and neither should anybody else. Um, having said that, I got my picture taken with Michael J. Fox and had my guitar and I put it a little bit in front of uh, Michael J. Fox, not, not all up in him, but just in front of him and graciously he reached up with his left hand and put his hand on my guitar and I didn't say a word. I was very happy. So here's the picture. And I did have VIP access, so that's the little uh, wristband that we are required to wear to gain access into the center. Uh, this right up here, I'm oh, sorry, right up here is the ticket to first priority seating for an evening with the cast. And this one down here is the autograph. And I did get the guitar autographed. So that is a very nice picture. This is very, very much treasured. Thank you, Michael, for that. Now, without further ado, uh, one more thing. Let me show you this. This came out last week, People Magazine. So if you're interested in, that, in this, go out and buy it. It's our 30-year love story by Michael J. Fox and his wife, Tracy. It's a very, very good article. Multi-page article, not just one page, but it's a multi-page article. Feature article tells about their love, their life, their marriage, their ups and downs, their struggles with Parkinson's and raising children. Very nice article. I would highly recommend getting that. Because you don't know how much more time Michael has with us. All right, so last but not, actually, it is last. Here is the guitar. This is definitely going in my fire safe. It's a prized, prized possession of mine now that Michael has signed it, and there is his autograph. Very, very nice. And that's a top loader piece that I cut <clears throat> to cover the autograph for protection so that nothing can get on it, damage it, smear it, scratch it, <clears throat> whatever. 
So that's that. Very, very nice piece right here. This is my most prized possession. And this will go into my fire safe. Well, thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed the video as much as I enjoyed making it. Thank you and have a great weekend. And as always, your future is what you make it. So make it a good one. Bye-bye. Hello and thank you for watching this video. I do hope you enjoyed it. Please like the video right down below with a thumbs up and make a comment. I do respond to comments and subscribe to this channel if you're not already a subscriber and tell your friends and family about Future Finds. And remember, your collection is whatever you make it. So make it a good one, all of you. Thank you and we'll see you again soon.